So you try it tonight. Try it with anything in this world. The unmarried, if you desire to be married, what symbol in the world would imply that you are married? A little band in this Western world, a little band around this finger. Not around any other finger. Around this finger. It doesn't have to be the biggest aspidastra in the world. Just a plain little gold ring. If you wore it there, it would imply you're married. Sleep tonight as though you wore one. Don't put your physical thumb on it. Put your imaginary thumb on it. And feel it in your imagination. You can do it. Feel a ball. Can you feel it? Then feel a piece of silk. Feel this. One after the other. Can you discriminate between all these different sensations? If you can discriminate between this and a tennis ball and a baseball and a piece of silk, then you can't discriminate between nothings. They must exist, though unseen by your eyes, they still must exist. So if I can discriminate between these unseen objects, these objects, though unseen, must be real. Well, now take that and put it there. But feel when you wear it that you are proud of the one who put it there. You don't have to see what he looks like. When it's put there, you'll be proud of his name, to bear it, and you'll be proud of him. Just put it there. You know why I know that? My wife did it. <laughs> she did it. Actually, she did it. One day she was in the presence of a, a so-called sensitive. And this one said to her, why did you take off your wedding ring? She said, I am not married. Oh, she said, don't fool me. You took off your wedding ring. She said, but I did, I'm not married. She said, I'll even tell you his name. And she started off with Neb, Never, Never. She didn't quite get it, but she was coming very, very close to it. She was actually sensing what my wife in consciousness was feeling. When I first met her, I wanted her the very first day I knew her. I wanted to marry her, but I was entangled. Was I entangled? But by this law, I disentangle myself. Without hurting anyone, I disengage myself from all these complexities so that I could actually legitimately say, will you marry me? But in the meanwhile, she was wearing the ring. I hadn't yet put it there, but she allowed me to put it there and slept as though I had put it there. So I tell you, unmarried ladies, if you decide to be married, maybe you don't, if you do, that's the way to do it. And he'll come out of the nowhere. You don't have to go and buy anyone or try to meet the right people. Usually when you try to meet the right one, he's always the wrong one. So don't go searching. Those who go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness. And the loveless never find love. Only the loving find love and they never have to seek for it. So you fall in love, you don't have to seek for it. You draw them. They come to you. So here, this is the power of which I speak. The power of the universe, the power that created and sustains the universe is resident in you as your own wonderful human imagination. That's God. Don't forget it. I know it's difficult when man has been trained to believe in an external God. And he goes to church and gets on his knees and he prays to an external God. And he goes home at night, maybe he does say his prayers and he gets down on his knees and he prays to an external God. All right, maybe that's a nice thing for someone to do. But I tell you, he isn't out there at all. You won't be criticized for it, but he is within you. Very personal, may I tell you. He is very, very personal. And within you. When you're told in scripture, of the rock that begot us, we are unmindful. And that seems to be all a figure of speech on how true that thing is. One night sitting in the silence, rather than an afternoon, I was thinking of nothing in particular, and suddenly before my eyes came this quartz, an enormous quartz. As I looked at it, it fragmented itself, <coughs> broke into numbless little pieces, and then it reassembled itself. As it reassembled itself, it was not into a quartz, but into a man, seated in the lotus posture. I'm looking at this man, all seated now, perfect man. As I looked at him, I'm looking at myself. Here I am, the perceiver, observing myself, seated in the lotus posture, this deep, deep meditation. And as I became aware that I'm looking at myself, it began to glow. 
and it glowed and glowed and glowed. When it reached the intensity of luminosity, it exploded. And then I returned to this level. <coughs> Where did I see him within me? That being is meditating this. This is but a projection of itself in the world. And when he wakes within me, completely wakes, I am he. God actually became me, that I may become God. And he has put me through all the paces, allowing me to make all the mistakes, to make a monster like the thing that I talked, talked about earlier. I made that, and I made a lovely one. And he allows it in his meditation. He is the dreamer in me. And he is dreaming this, and dreaming everything that I dream in this world. And when he awakes, this will cease to be, and I am he. And he is God. So I tell you, go out and try it. Begin tonight. I make you this promise, if you try it faithfully, you will not fail.